Are you ready? Okay. Uh, I'd like to call to order the Tel City Advisory Planning Commission, and I'd like for you all to stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Julie, would you go ahead and do the uh, roll call? Me? Yes. Okay. Matt Kell. Here. Julie Conner. Here. Mark Boslin. Here. Don Ferrero. Here. Tim Reed. Here. Larry Kleeman. Here. Joe Wasnicki. Here. Erin Hess. She informed me she would not be here. Um. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Yeah, it's Balaji Kashyap. Did I spell it correctly? Yeah. Awesome. And you're here? Okay. And Jeff Howard, the attorney, is? I'm present. Present. Steve Goodson? Present. And I'm here, and no... Is there anyone from the news present? Okay. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. We have a quorum. Uh, is there any... Amendments to the agenda. You know, I'm hearing none, uh, but we're going to have some public hearings, but uh, they're going to be a little bit different than maybe in what we've done in the past on these public hearings. Uh, so I'm not going to make any uh, changes in the agenda. But do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Do I hear a second? Who made the second? Joe. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hearing none. Okay, we'll have a reorganization. We have election of officers. And we've got to elect the president of the commission and a vice president of the commission. So at this time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to uh, Je our attorney, Jeff Haggard, and let him conduct the election. Um, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, as you're aware, uh, Mac is the president of the commission. I, frankly, who's the vice? Tim is the vice president of the commission. Um, um, I, I think the appropriate thing right now would just be to hear if anybody has any nominations. If, uh, if somebody wants to state any, any nominations or uh, make any statements with regard to any uh, desire to hold any of those positions, now would be the time to do it. I make a motion that uh, Tim and Matt serve out the remainder of 2022. To, to be renominated to the same position. Okay, so we've got a motion that, that Mac and Tim be renominated in their current positions. Anybody have a second on that? I'm, so, I'm sorry? I thought there would be other positions. Well, we've got... They're, they're not elected. These are the only two elected. The officers are elected and the others are appointments. Okay. And so, I'm sorry, did I hear a second? Second. Mr. Ferraro, made a second. Who made the second? I, I have a hard time seeing. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I'll hand it back over okay. to you, Mr. President. The appointment, thank you, uh, Mr. Attorney. Uh, the appointments, we need a secretary of the commission. Now, the secretary of the commission doesn't really take notes or take the minutes. The job of the secretary is to sign off on the orders that we pass from time to time. Yeah, form, formal secretary versus recording secretary. Yeah. Julie is the recording Now, who is, the, Julie, who is our formal secretary now? Larry. Okay, so Larry, will you accept that position again? Yeah. Because all you got to do is sign your name once in a while. So, <laughs> yeah. so do we need to make a motion, or how do we do well, Why don't we go through all these that we could, but why don't we just go through all of them and then make one okay, motion, so one motion for all of them? Secretary. Yeah. Okay, the advisory member for the Perry County Plan Commission. That's, that's me. That's Tim. Tim, will you accept that again? I do. Okay. Commission appointed to the Boning Zone. Board of Zoning Appeals, extra director member. Now, who was that? Was that, was that Dale? I think that was Dale. I think that was Dale. It was one of them. Mm -hmm. But Dale's not on here anymore. Yeah. So, who wants that? Now, it has to be somebody outside. It has to be Tim. Or who else? Who else lives outside the city limits? here on this. Um, Is it? Yeah. Um, you? Okay. 
He lives yeah. outside the city limits, so I guess that leaves you. Yes, you know? <laughs> 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 on the left. So, uh, I guess will you accept that? Yeah. Okay. And recording secretary is Julie Hakes. Uh -uh. Julie Day Dixon. Julie Dixon. This year, as last year. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll do it for this year. Okay, this year. That's Julie Dixon. Okay. Uh, budget committee. I think that was I was on it. I was on it. And you was on it. And Tim, was that you? Or and and Steve, Good, it? Steve Goodson. Yeah. Tim. Was yeah. That I was you? And then the investigating committee to update the zoning ordinances. I was on that. Okay. And who else do we have on there? That was me. Tim. Yeah. So that's Joe and Tim. Yeah. What we need? I think probably need three. I guess I'll do it, I guess. I'll be the third one. I think that's all of them. Yeah, that should be all of them. So you've heard all of the people nom that nominated uh, for these positions. They all say they will accept it. So now I'm asking for a lesser, is there any discussion on this, first of all? I see no discussion, so let's have a, uh, we'll have a vote. All those in favor of nominating these people for these positions, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, they're all nominated. Okay, adopt meeting date, time, and location. Uh, is everybody pretty happy with the second Thursday of the month and at 6 o'clock? Can we meet right here? Yeah. Okay. Then we'll keep meeting the same time then. I don't think we need a motion on that, do we? No, I don't think so. Statement from board members. Uh, declarations for disqualifications. Probably none. And then a statement from the commission attorney. I have nothing. As it recognitions of citizens that are if they're not on the agenda. Seeing none. Has everyone signed in on the sign in sheet? Okay, the read and approval minutes of the previous meeting. This has been a long time ago, September 9th, uh, 2021. So do I have a motion? Do we approve the minutes as presented if everyone has had a chance to uh, read them and have any comments, any corrections? I didn't see any, but I can't remember that long back what we mean. The only suggestion is anybody that wasn't on the commission or at that meeting would recuse from, from voting. On okay. Board. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve. Here, I have a second. Who's that, Joe? I'll second. Okay. All those, in favor, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Hearing none. Okay. Communications <coughs> and expenditures. Uh, Steve, we have none, right? No. Okay. And uh, the budget committee, we have the. Uh, Investigating appropriate fees and charges and penalties, uh, though, and establish administrative rules for fees, charges, and penalties, and approve the reports of the budget committee. We have not met, so we don't have any of those, right, Steve? None. Okay, thank you. Reports from staff from uh, Mr. Steve Goodson. Do you have any reports at this time? We haven't met in a while. Uh, I'd like to see the commission meet at least every couple months. So, okay. Uh, that way we can hopefully stay on top of things. Yeah. Well, so set a day. We had a lull here where we've not met in a while. Well. And, and you know, obviously there's not been any business. Hmm. So, but I'd like to see not go any longer than two two months. Okay. Well, this uh, well we can set a date now if you want to set a date for a meeting later this month or. I think he's just talking about the regular meetings on yes. this. Oh, regular, regular meetings. Regular. I thought you were <laughs> meeting for yes. our budget. And I, and I would, we do I, need that. I would agree with Steve. It's, even if there's no official business or no hearings, um, it's probably good to get together at, at a meeting may last five minutes. Yeah, um, and we've had those meetings before, uh, too. I, I, hey, as, as the city attorney on a salary and not hourly, I like five minutes. Okay. Yes, so. <laughs> Same here. But, yeah, I but, I, but I think it's good for the, to get together so that uh, you have meetings. If there's something that we're not aware of, members of the public want to show up, they can be heard. Um, and, and in this day and age, I know members of the public can reach out through the mayor's office and through the planning office, but still, there's something to be said for occasionally having an in-person meeting, even if we don't have official business at a meeting. So. Okay. okay, under, okay, yeah, move it. One other thing. Oh. Yep, go ahead. Uh, the fees, I think, we're going to, this is not our tables, but I don't want to use here, but 
we put it on the back burner, obviously, with the lumber prices. I don't think it's time now to even look at it. So we'll take over the uh, permit fees. Okay. So we'll do that now. Well, thank, thank you. you. Okay, we're going to move on to other public hearings. I think what we're going to do, we're going to go with C first, which is a Tell City Comprehensive Plan. So we'll have a... Uh, and I actually think, uh, Mac, given that they were published, published as 630, um, what I would suggest is that uh, any other items on the agenda that we could skip to um, prior to any of the hearings, I, I think we should we should not start any of the hearings prior to 630 because that's the time they were published. Oh, okay. Unless I'm... I think Matt didn't hear publishers for 6 o'clock. Okay. So Matt said six. Walter, what time did your did your say? I, I didn't hear six. You said six as well. So we as long as the notices that were published said six o'clock and not six thirty, we just don't want to start one early. I don't want somebody to come in fifteen minutes into a presentation and, and not have heard it because they were because they received a notice that it was at six thirty. So does everybody want to proceed, or we can go ahead. And Am I, am I right on, uh, are we right on the time, Steve? You are. Uh, again, this is your call, but since you're going to act on the top of the plan, which probably won't take just a few minutes, mm -hmm. a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Was the conference plan published, uh, notice published for 6.30? 6.30. So I think we should, we should stick with the docket items that were published for 6 o'clock. Yeah. If we get into the other two, we probably don't take a lot. It is, yeah. Sure. sure. So, I mean, if everybody's good on waiting until 6.30, Well, I, I, what I'm getting at is that if, if any any notice that was published for 6 o'clock, we can we can begin that hearing. We just can't begin any hearings. The comprehensive plan was, was not noticed until 6.30, so we can't begin the with the comprehensive plan as much as we may like to not get out first. Could you recess till 6.30? I don't think we need to. I guess what I'm, what I'm saying is, is if the notices were published for 6 o'clock, um, then we're we're after six o'clock now. We can we can begin those hearings. But the zoning board we can't bid. for the pro, I mean for the comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan we have to wait on. Okay. We can push it to the back. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Now I guess the members here have a. Uh, Who are we doing first? 002 or 006? Well, there's there's I did leave some minutes off of here. Uh, uh, you know, we have our meeting, but we've got to read. We, we, I don't think we've approved these, but we're supposed to note that we have read the technical advisory committee meetings, right? Yes. Yeah. So we're supposed, and I didn't so note that anywhere. Who do you want to do first, though? Because we've got minutes for both of those. Uh, <coughs> we're listed on here, 002. I guess you should start with 002. Yeah, well, we're going to start with the first one. and. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Then I think we can skip to 06. Okay, we'll go to Farmer Heights. 006 Farmer Heights. Farmer Heights. Okay, we're going to have a, uh, uh, I guess. We need to have uh, Mr. Muner speak first. Correct. For 15 minutes and briefly describe that. Now, before you get into this, we're treating this as a planned unit development. So the development plan and the requirements are going to be a little bit different than what they are just for an individual house. So, Julie, you should have a copy of this too. And, uh, I don't know. Do you want to read any of the highlights of this, or what do you think? How we all present with? Well, the first thing you, I guess, it has to come before the planning commission. This is like a preliminary draft thing, and we have to uh, sit down, talk about a few things. You present what you think. If we think it's appropriate, what you presented, we can move that on, and then the city council has to actually have an official public meeting on it. The city council, then the city council. After they have the public meeting and there's any public that's had any chance to inject anything, then it comes back to the planning commission and the planning commission has to approve it and there are certain things that the planning commission has to approve in this. And then after the planning commission approves it, it goes back to city council again. 
But what we're going to do tonight, we're going to have a public hearing, and uh, you're going to present your program. And then anybody that wants to remonstrate it, those at individuals will have five minutes, and as their group, they got 15. And what this is going to do is going to give you a chance to hear what people are, you know, may have to say about your development. So are you ready to present yours tonight then? Okay. I don't know if you understood. I get, well, I'm kind of, yeah. And you can ask us any questions. And then the public really can't ask, I don't know, in a public, in a public hearing, I don't know if this public hearing, can the public ask him questions or is that? No, the public, public wants to, what we wanted at a public hearing is for the public to address this board and be heard. Right, address this board. I think we can address him in this one. So go ahead and explain what you're planning to do and your, your maps and drawings that you've got. And we're supposed to take a look at those, you know, what you presented. And if we think it's appropriate, we'll send it on. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, my name is Matt Junior. I'm representing Farmland Heights Subdivision and Farmland Heights Apartment Homes. I am the owner of the property. With me today, I have my mom, Judy, my sister, Melanie, and my uncle-in-law, Gary Hay. You asked for a quick point of order. Um, this is coming through the plan unit development. Is this current code? Yes. So yes. Because originally when I was working with Steve, I was looking at a preliminary subdivision plan and a development plan for the apartment. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to combining the two. Uh, and it looked like it may change the process probably a little bit from how the application was filed. I, I think it would. But I can go forward with the presentation. Yes. Everybody have a packet in front of them? Yes. First of all, I'm excited to carry on. Uh, the legacy that my dad created for this property many years ago when he acquired this tract from a real estate transaction back in the mid 80s. Over time, he slowly started to sell off some lots uh, for people to either purchase an existing home on one of the lots or, or uh, build a new home uh, on a particular sell off. The, the site is kind of unique in, in its history. history. It, it used to be the old Fort Street station, you may recall, on 14th Street. There's, There's an old private roadway that goes surge to the top. That used to be the residence of, of, of the ranger station. They didn't have someone to live on site. Halfway up the hill, uh, there used to be the old gap where the actual ranger station was located. It's in the property now, one of the sell-off properties that my dad did back uh, in the early 90s to uh, Don and Barbara Kugel, who was the current owner at this time. And then where the apartments are located, you go a couple of pages in, you'll, you'll see the rendering of the development. The apartment is where the old parking lot used to be that served the ranger station. And the little This side is very unique in that it's a large track in the heart of Tell City. city with mature trees and some beautiful views. And it is my desire to maintain as much of that as I can in developing these 15 lot subdivision and two buildings containing 24 apartment units. As you can see in the development plan, most of the lots are a half acre and a couple of lots are pushing right at one acre. The property has framing on 14th Street, a small section of Bloom Street, and it consists of blocks 180, 200, 201. There are two existing curb cuts along 14th Street. One is the existing Ranger Station roadway that goes up to the top of where the old Ranger Station used to sit. The other curb cut is off of 14th Street, which used to serve the parking lot for the Ranger Station. So that would be the roadway serving the apartment. There's, There's a couple, couple streets that were vacated back in the 30s. Those were um, Harvard Blue Street, Street Gutenberg Street, 15th and 16th Street, and an alley between 14th and 15th. The single family, family element, element of the development is addressed in 15 lots. As you can see in yellow are the single family lots on approximately 8.80 acres, turning zone R2 medium residential density. 
property is served by existing private roadway access off of 14th Street and is known as that Forest Ranger Road. It currently serves two existing lots that were created uh, when my dad started to sell off some of the lot. One of them was this lot and then existing residence at the top. I'm looking, I'm looking to, to extend that existing range road, road across the ridge line of the property. It, it terminates roughly here, and I'm going to extend it straight around the center of the property, utilizing the existing contours, and then create the half acre off of it. I'm, I'm looking, looking to create a 30 foot public utility sewer drainage and private access easement. The utility side of it will handle city water, sanitary sewers, and um, Underground electric will also be served with that existing easement. The roadway will be approximately 18 feet wide asphalt, and that will address some of the guidelines of the land, looking to make sure there's proper access for public safety, fire, police, and EMS. I've also wanted to make sure I had maintained as much of the character of this property. It's really an untouched property. It has a lot of mature trees on it. The existing property owners enjoy that view shed. So, so that's, that's the reason, reason why I want to kind of keep, keep the lot set at a decent size, size maintain that integrity, and allow each individual homeowner to make a decision on what trees to take out in order to maximize their benefit of the joining these types of lots. There will be dedicated uh, <laughs> these lots, a public utility sewer drainage and private access easement, as I mentioned. This will be created in order to create a maintenance agreement that will share the responsibility of maintaining this roadway between all of the lots. Currently, the two existing lots, the one at the top and the two across here, already have a crossover maintenance agreement that my dad established years ago when those lots were created. I'm also proposing for the single family lots to be restrictions. These are created um, to enhance design standards, if you will, on particular homes. The guide restrictions such as the size of the structure, building material, accessory structures, or any other types of design standards that would help create a level of certainty when someone is particularly buying a home and building, building a lot. The density of this 15 lot subdivision is 1.7 dwelling units per acre, and the R2 medium density allows a maximum of 5 units per acre. The multi family residential, if you look through your Renewed, you can see it's in the center part. Access off of more of an arterial street, 14th Street, not intersecting with the private single family street. The R2 uh, medium density residential district allows multi family housing with the conditions used for that. So part of the process I was applying for was the conditions used for that in order to go forward in front of the board of zoning adjustment. I currently have advertised for that hearing for next Tuesday, the 19th at 6.30. I'm proposing two apartment, apartment buildings, buildings with 12, 12 units each, approximately 1,000 square feet, feet. Six, six units on the first floor, six, six units on the second floor. The multi-family development would be accessed from the existing curb cut on 14th Street, Street will, serve will serve the multi-family complex by a private roadway. roadway. The proposed buildings are utilizing, like I mentioned earlier, the Ranger parking lot driveway. Electricity will be served 14th Street and underground. The water and sanitary sewer will connect to the sanitary sewer and water that are feeding the single family lot. The water will come off of Bloom and 15th Street and, and utilize within that public utility easement as well as the sanitary sewers that will have a gravity line to the center, roughly here, which is a low point, and then a four train that will come up and bring it out to 14th Street. Those were a lot of the stuff uh, uh, working with the local, local uh, electric park water park and water park and sewer park. Development will provide 48, 48 parking, parking spaces for the Tell City Land and Development Code. code. And, and the development request will not interfere with any existing utility services in the area or be detrimental to the public health, health safety, safety, and human welfare, welfare of the property. properties. To the, the south of this development, development is Zone C3 commercial. commercial. To the north and east is R2 medium, residential density, and, and to the west are vacant lot and, and the single family lot. The proposed single family subdivision, along with the conditions used permitted, development for multifamily will provide additional housing and rental inventory with the growing Tell City economy. The local economic development climate indicates 
Still city is in demand for market rate housing and multi-family residential to support the increasing opportunities with local and regional employers. The property is located within 400 feet of the intersection of Highway 66 and 14th Street. In this area, there's walking distance to accept restaurants, pharmacy, and other commercial support. The density for the apartments is 16 dwelling units per acre, and then the R3 residential multifamily that density is 16 units per acre. I've also highlighted in the back the zoning restrictions for R2 and R3 just for your reference, and, and lot size standards. At the very back is the Tel City Planning Commission Comprehensive Plan. In addressing this, this development through your comprehensive plan, the proposed farm and bike subdivision and farm and bike apartment homes will build upon the vision of Tel City's comprehensive plan by promoting great places for people of all ages to live, work, play, visit, and building off of the city's charm. The proposed single family and multifamily apartment homes meet both policies of the comprehensive plan for land use development and community infrastructure. The proposals are most orderly growth and development by expanding on opportunities to increase housing and residential needs to support the employment opportunities within the Tel City area. The proposed single family residential subdivision and multifamily development also complements those objectives as established in the Tel City Comprehensive Plan. Increasing housing inventory is key to keeping the youth and young adults engaged in the community and provide future opportunities when they enter the workforce, creating a mixture Housing options, options contribute, contribute to the baby boomers and the aging by providing affordable options to support all levels of a person's life. Increasing mixed housing, housing options, options provide stability of all ages and levels of the workforce to support economic development opportunities and encourage citizens to remain in the city and their families. The proposed side is vacant and close to many city services and commercial short orders and meet those goals and objectives of vacant properties and housing for baby boomers. As people become more mobile in the work and expanding telecommuter becomes more popular for both the employee and the business, people seek out quality of life locations to raise a family and create a lifestyle. So creating good inventory of housing options, both single family and multi family, is where various levels of workforce are critical in attracting and maintaining businesses. When I look at this development based on the guidelines of your current comprehensive plan, guideline one on the land use development. Here's your being in compliance with R1, R2, and I put them, them back there in my eyes and them for easy reading. <laughs> you kind of turn back to page 65 of that excerpt of your comprehensive plan. The guideline that addresses land use development under subsection A, residential use. This development appears to be R1. Interior new residential development, R2 ensuring adequate buffering and screening and mitigation of nuisances. R3 encouraging new designs of residential uh, and adequate lot sizes and shapes. R4 evaluating different levels of density. R5 and 6 deal with development restricting in floodplains and wetlands. And also R7 and R9, R12, 13, and 14, which carry a lot of innovative and different housing opportunities. The other guideline under the development infrastructure under transportation subsection. T1 ensures all the development land use changes are served by added streets that have the capacity to accommodate the issues it serves. T4 talks about providing adequate access to form and development of proper functioning streets for emergency vehicles. T5, T6 talks about adequate access to control. Making, making sure, sure that you don't access higher intensity, higher intensity uses, uses lower intensity, doesn't the situation the apartment to be accessed directly to 14th Street, street and not utilize the private street that will serve a single family block. T9 talks about young priority, priority maintaining and upgrading existing roadways. So that's why I thought it was important to work with some of the immediate property owners that I protect the character of the existing ranger station, enhance that road and widen it to serve the future needs well as to protect the health and safety of the public. Under sanitary sewer subsection, we are providing sanitary sewer as a relief section F2, F3, and the water subsection, we meet W3 during all the development of that water. And then storm drainage, uh, D2, uh, 
uh, ensure adequate stormwater retention in detention facilities in conjunction with new and expanded development. There is a low duty uh, expected by property up in this area. Uh, has some severe erosion going on. Look like a lot of that is distributing from surrounding developments, but we will look at that in the construction phase and make sure that it, at least where I come from, from, from if you look at it, stormwater to be maintained from a, what we call pre and post runoff. So we want to make sure that any development does not increase the runoff than what exists today. So that's, that's what we'll be designed, we'll be designed to when we get, get to the construction phase, phase to make sure that, that we do protect the surrounding neighborhood or the surrounding property owners and make sure that if the need for a detention basin or something of that nature that will be incorporated. Probably get to the lower area somewhere along that area. The other the guideline talks about the environmental. Those so guidelines E4, using best practices, practices for erosion and material. And then, of course, um, guidelines regarding government, G1, development, comprehensive coordinated, promoting economic development, as well as G14, continuing implement programs to assist in housing maintenance, rehabilitation, and new construction, either moderate income, the disabled, or the aging population. Conclusion, I appreciate your opportunity to evaluate this proposal. I'm excited about bringing this opportunity to the community, working with my immediate neighborhood and neighbors with this property, and I'll be happy to entertain any questions at this time. We'll have more questions for you later on outside of the public hearing once we get into going over it. I think right now it would be appropriate if anybody out there has, like I say, this is not really an official public hearing. The official public hearing will have to be the city council. But if anybody has any questions they want to ask now or want him to address, now's the time to ask them. But Mr. Warner was interested in talking about it. Okay. Now we have any questions? Okay, we have a hand in the back. Stand up, state your name and where you live. Yeah, yes. Not trying to be mean. Now, people are watching on YouTube, but I can't hear it. <laughs> Thank you. My name, My name is Lee Shively, uh, and, and I'm here, here representing uh, several of the residents on 14th Street. Street. Uh, My mother, mother lives on 14th Street, Street and then several, several of her neighbors, and they were not able to attend tonight. tonight. But it's just uh, everyone that I've talked to, they, they voted me in to come tonight to, to represent them. them. But uh, everyone's very supportive of a mass uh, development. And that is obviously the city, you know, needs new uh, home uh, options uh, as the industry is growing. And so for the city to grow and tax basis impacts and so forth. But the only, there's only really two questions that the residents that I uh, have spoken with on 14th Street have, my mother and others. One is uh, just we want to make sure that there's any impact on the pumping station that's over on Petsalazzi and 15th Street. As you know, 14th Street has had over 40 years of sewage problems and sewer problems backing up into the homes. And that was finally resolved probably about 8 to 10 years ago. Um, and um, so they just want to make sure that there's proper checks that are done uh, on the pumping station just to make sure that the, you know, with more housing and, and the apartment complexes pumping into 14th Street to the sewer uh, system that it doesn't you know, recreate a problem with that pumping station. Okay, okay, that's, that's one, one question. The second question, the second question then is, is, is uh, right now on 14th Street, Street, I know Mayor Kell's familiar with this, um, there's, there's a lot of traffic that comes off 66, and they'll cut down 14th Street by Long John Silvers uh, in order to avoid the stoplights uh, going up to Washington and 66. So they'll come down that two block stretch, and so they're going to use it at a high rate of speed. Often they'll run the four way stop at Washington and uh, 14th Street. So the neighbors really would like. For the group to consider, or for Mr. Munier to consider putting in maybe a three way stop where his entrance coming from the apartments onto 14th Street would, uh, would be because you could really kill two birds with one stone or take care of an existing issue, the speeding and the increased traffic, and then you would force them to slow down. Uh, they hit the four way stop and come to the other four way stop, another block down at uh, Washington and 14th Street. Uh, plus, also that might reduce the traffic a little bit as well. Um, because, you know, folks might say, well, instead of hitting two different four-way stops, I'll just stay on 66 and go on up. There's a lot of families with children, too, on 14th Street now. 
That's where I grew up, uh, and I, I just recently moved back, and I'm building a new house here in, in town, but um, there's, there's a lot more families, and so there's a concern with the children and the high-rated high speed, speed in the traffic and adding more traffic to that. I think it can be easily managed um, you know, with the three-way stops or something of that nature. So that's basically it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, the city attorney will speak to the traffic. Uh, well, I, I, I can I can speak a, a bit to each, and I'm I'm far from an expert on the the, the sewer issue. Um, I, I wish that Chris Toothman was here. I can only advise anybody uh, here or, or that may be watching that uh, this this petition did go to the technical advisory committee. And so my understanding is one of the considerations of the Technical Advisory Committee is whether our existing infrastructure could withstand whatever new input was placed in it. Um, based upon the, the report of the Technical Advisory Committee, I can only assume that Mr. Toothman or representatives of the Waste Treatment uh, uh, Department um, have evaluated that and concluded that it would. Um, and, and frankly, uh, if, if it turns out it doesn't, then that's uh, shame on our waste treatment and they're going to have to do some work to to upgrade if it comes to that. Um, fingers crossed we don't have to do that. With regard to the traffic issue, um, that is probably an issue that would be <coughs> a petition brought to the to Tel City Board of Public Works and Safety. Um, they regularly review requests for uh, stop signs, signage, uh, uh, dis disabled parking. They're, they're the relevant body that would make that decision. Um, but I think that's something that if it came before them as this process moves forward, uh, I hate to guess what they'd say, but I, but I think they'd look relatively favorably on that type of uh, request for signage there. So, do we have any more? Okay, we have one here in front. Could you go up to the mic and state your name where you live? Could you get up face to mic so we can hear you? Okay. So, so uh, I've, I've spoken, spoken with him, and yes, he's, he's shown me where he's going to be building places. When the apartment's going to be here, there's, there's going to be one here, one down here, here and then, then one, one between, between my, my home and this lady, lady here who lives at the top of the hill. hill. And uh, I, 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 I have his phone number. I can call him. him. I guess there's, there's a problem that, that I just want it set out there for everybody. That I have a lot of uh, anxiety about this equipment coming up and, and uh, taking down, down trees and, and, and putting in drainage, drainage and all that. Because my, my, our home is very, uh, we, don't we don't have any cracks or we don't have any settling. And uh, I just want to know who I go to that that were to happen other than this gentleman. gentleman. My insurance company, one, one of you, God. God. You know. <laughs> I can I can try to give you an answer if that's your only question right now. Right now, that's my only question. Well, I don't want to go too far because, quite frankly, the the, the stock answer for any attorney in this situation is call an attorney. Um, but I think any attorney with uh, worth his medal would say first contact your insurance company. You you've mentioned you already got Mr. Munier's phone number. That'd be a good starting point. So I think. That kind of be the three, Mr. Munier, your insurance company, or private counsel, if it comes to something like that. Because so our house has been, been there since 1989, and, and you know, if anything, anything happens, happens this I understand. Is going to be yeah. so Unfortunately, the, the city is not in the position to police a, a damage claim if there's right. something like that. So that, that's really your, your option, is to speak with Mr. Munier, speak with your insurance company, or speak with your own counsel. Okay. I just wanted to get that out. Sure. Mr. Warner? Specific questions, or can I just address You can address us. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, my name is John, John Warner. I, I live at 3929 Mozart, Mozart Street, Tel City, City and I, 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 I have a few concerns about this that I just want to address with you and whatever you wish to do about it. One, One of my concerns is I heard Mr. Warner address this evening, this evening and that is stormwater runoff. Runoff. Not, not seen anything, anything in the plans about any infrastructure designed to alleviate that. He did mention the night, though, he is aware of. Uh, as you know, the development of a subdivision in previously undeveloped property is going to 
doesn't, doesn't create, create water, water, it increases the speed of water, which causes the flood. flood. It's, it's you're going to replace uh, rough, rough, undeveloped terrain, hard, hard surfaces, surfaces, roofs, sidewalks, driveways, streets. streets. That, that all increases the speed of water, creating flood. flood. That's, That's a given. It will happen. Uh, I know in the past you have required developers to design and put in provisions for maintenance of certain structures. Uh, swales, uh, dry dams, dams retention, retention ponds, ponds, things, things of, that of that nature to alleviate these issues. issues. This, this area is, is in a particularly vulnerable position for several reasons. One, One the train runs steep, runs steep run off all the way to fairly fast. fast. Second, it, it runs, runs into Windy, windy Creek. Creek. I remember a time when, when it was actually discussed to stop all the development in Tell City until something was done. Back, I can think you remember that. that. To alleviate, to alleviate problems, problems with Windy Creek, Creek. it was uh, uh, so full. Uh, so, so this runs, runs directly into Windy Creek. Creek. A gentleman, gentleman here addressed, addressed sewage problems, problems on 14th Street. Street. I, I thought there was, there was also some flooding along 14th Street. Street. There, there were Windy, Windy Creeks behind, behind it, I'm not sure about that. that. So, it's so it's a sensitive area. area. Uh, water, water is a fickle thing. thing. You, you really, really can't predict what it's going to do without a formal hydrology study. I would, I would suggest you consider, consider requiring a hydrology study of this area to determine how much this development is going to increase that water flow and how problems created by that water flow can be abated. That's, that's what I would, that's, that's my, my concern and that's my suggestion to you. My, my other, other, other problem, problem or concern that I have, have is, is private streets. streets. You, you can, can allow, allow private, private trees. Is, is it a good idea? idea? I, I don't, don't know of any subdivision in Tell City, city the, streets the streets of which, which are to be maintained, maintained by, by the owners as opposed to the municipality. Uh, it's my, my opinion, opinion that, that whenever infrastructure in a neighborhood or a subdivision is to be maintained by the residents as opposed, opposed to the governmental entity in which it's located, located problems occur. occur. Uh, there's there been, been problems, problems in the county. I know, I know the county, county authorized a developer to put a private sewage system, system, system in the subdivision. That system, system failed. failed. Uh, the, the county, county luckily, luckully found, found a way, way to do it. it. The county was faced, faced with the problem of, of remedying that. that. This is obviously, obviously not a sewage, but it's, but it's the same, same kind of thing. thing. It's infrastructure maintained by private people. There are many subdivisions in the county served by private roads. There have been numerous problems with, with these homeowners homeowner associations, which I assume is what the case would be here. here. <coughs> numerous <coughs> problems with these homeowners association not keeping, keeping roads, roads up, up and the county commissioners, commissioners receiving complaints from, from that a lot. Uh, it's, it's expensive, expensive to maintain, maintain streets. streets. Uh, uh, so, so I think, I think you, you should consider whether you want to make, make this what I would consider a major, major policy departure from the way subdivisions have traditionally been developed around here to allow the street to be put in, uh, depending, depending on, on private maintenance, because, because if it fails, fails you, know, you know, and I know, I know where it will come, come to. It will come, come to that, that desk, desk right, right there in front of the city council, and they will have to deal with it in some fashion or another. That, that brings, brings to bear another question, question is how the streets to be constructed. Uh, the city has very exacting construction standards for streets. streets. There has to be so many feet of rock. rock. I think even, even the number of rocks rock specified. specified. There has, has to be so many inches, inches of asphalt. asphalt. There has, has to be curb and gutter. gutter. Uh, are, you are you going, going to require, require the developer, the developer even, even if, if the streets, streets do go private, private to, to develop, develop that city, city standard so, so the street is matches the other streets, the streets and the residents have the same enjoyment of the street that everyone else does? Or, or are you going to allow something less? less? Or are you, are you going, going to say, say no all that? that? And if you don't, don't require to be built city standards, standards that's, that's going to only exacerbate these problems I mentioned before. before. It's, it's going to make, make it more expensive, expensive for homeowners to maintain, maintain themselves, themselves, which, which how many lots, lots are in here? Two, four, four six, six, eight, eight ten? ten? Fifteen. Fifteen, that's going to be very expensive for fifteen homeowners to maintain. If it's, it's not, not developed, developed the city standards, standards that's, that's going to make, make that problem, problem worse for them. them. And, and when, when it comes back, back on the city, city it's going to make, make it much more problematic, problematic for the city, city to, to manage. So, so I, would I would encourage you, you to consider, consider that. that. You, you may, may want to consult, consult the city, city council. council. 
If, if this, this does, does fail, fail as, as I'm predicting it has, has a very good, good chance of doing, it won't be your problem. problem. It will be the city council's problem. problem. You, you may wish to consult the city council, council and the mayor, mayor to see what their, their attitude is about allowing this private street subdivision to be maintained in the city. I'm not saying one way or the other, but I think it's a major decision that needs to be thought through carefully and perhaps other people consult along with it. I don't, I don't know if there's going to be formal covenants or not. I have heard you mention that there, there were, I haven't seen any. any. Uh, I don't I know if you've seen any covenants. Do they have covenants? No, they don't. Have no. the covenants been actually developed yet? Or they just have a right Okay. You may want to take a look at covenants. That's something I think that would interest you. I'm not saying covenants are inherently good or inherently bad, but it may be of interest to see what these covenants are. This is not the final line that you would propose. Uh, it has to be. I'll let you. Uh, uh, thank, thank you very, very much, much for listening to me on this. this. If you have any questions for me, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Thank you, Mr. Warner. Does anyone else have any comments? If not, we'll close the uh, public hearing for this. Uh, PUD and we'll uh, we'll move on to the can we do the planning commission not the planning the plan development plan. Plan. plan next to get that out of the way I'm sorry Julie uh, I, it, it's your meeting okay. let's do the development plan and get that out of the way what are we doing development plan development plan we're going to have a public, public hearing for the real development quick, plan real quick real quick for Farmland Heights no, no, we're, 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 we're talking uh, the comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan. That's why I was yeah, saying I think about it. I apologize. Okay, so, uh, My brain is not what it used to be. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. I guess, the Mayor, you want to go ahead and make some comments on the comprehensive plan? I think we've all had a chance, at least I've had a chance to read it. I know that. So. I've had a chance to read it. I don't Thank you all.
more than, than some, some other planning missions and groups that I've seen. So kudos to you all. Thank you for actually looking before the meeting. Um, just, just maybe, maybe giving a little, a little bit of background, background on the plan, plan itself, itself, just because it is going to look a little, little different from the current plan right, right now. Uh, the, the plan is divided up into five different sections, or four different sections. Uh, you kind of have a plan summary that kind of talks about you know, how you develop a plan, why it's plan important, and kind of what's all in it, and, and kind, kind of a general, general background, background, which is an, uh, kind, kind of an update on the city's, city's demographics. demographics. So, you know, you know who's, who's living, living here now? You know, what kind of businesses are here? here. Uh, what, what are the residents like? Where are they working from? Things similar to that. And then, and then we, we get into the conference plan, plan that so we talk about, you know, all the DVDs we have. What do we, what do we actually, actually talk about? You know, what was just, just us sitting around and, and you know, no flipping things. things. We actually got work done. We kind of presented the information, heard things back, and then had working sessions. And then, and then kind, kind of the meat of the plan, plan or what is actually kind of going to drive the implementation and the vision goals is in that third section. Um, this, this plan was a open plan project, project, so, so they, they have kind of a set of criteria that they want to see in these documents. So, so that's, that's all in that section three, your land use, public, public facility services, services, economic development, agriculture, parks and right broadband. broadband. So kind of, so kind of, of all those different themes kind of tie into uh, your decision, decision making and kind of going forward, and then, and then all, all these action steps, steps and strategies that you see within here as well. Um, just, just kind of maybe, maybe breaking down one, one of those because, because again, you know, it is, it is a little different looking than your, your previous plan. plan. Uh, uh, in that third section, all these, these contents are broken down into uh, a little, little bit of maybe like a background each one. I'll use use land use, for example, because that's kind of what we're talking about tonight. And probably be the one that you will use the most as well. Uh, so, so within, within each section, section you're going to kind of have a little bit of a deeper, deeper dive, dive maybe to the existing conditions, either maybe it's a little more specific to house, maybe, maybe to broadband. Um, and then after that, that each kind of section, section goes into um, actual strategies and goals. And goals. Uh, so, so one, one of these strategies for land use on page 38 here would be, you know, um, redevelopment and development within the city. And so, you know, one of the ideas that you hear often from the public, the steering committee, um, um, was, you know, you know, all about, about that uh, kind of area, area south, south of downtown. downtown. Uh, so, so, you know, when we start doing we need to kind of bring it all back to this area, like, like what are some, some ideas with some strategies to think about that? that. Um, and then, and then kind of at the end, end of each of those sections, you'll see a little table that has a blue header at the top. These are the action steps, as we call them, or kind of those implementable things that you all will do the city, you know, organizations will do to actually kind of progress goals and ideas of this plan. Um, those, those tables kind of break down all those strategies by priority, by different, you know, groups, or partnerships, you might be involved, and then kind of spread those on resources as well. Uh, one, one important thing that, you know, if you look at these tables and you see priority, maybe low, maybe high priority. You know, that doesn't mean that you think that one item is less important than another. It doesn't mean that the timeline of those is, you know, a little different. So maybe uh, property maintenance could, could be one, one of the high priorities because that's something that, you know, the public thought that we need to focus on right now. And that's a little easier to implement than, say, you know, bringing uh, all, <laughs> all new types of equipment and different um, um, Besides that, uh, there's, there's different kinds of future mapping, mapping within these. these. Um, kind, kind of the one, one that I'll kind of touch, touch briefly on here, here as well because it would be important to future decisions that you all make. There's going to be that future land use map. Uh, so, uh, so that, that map, map is located on page 36, and, and it's, it's going to be part of the future land use plan, use plan. That, that is part of every single comprehensive plan. plan. Um, and that, that includes, this is kind of a carryover from the previous one, so it includes that uh, future land, land use map where you know the areas or different kinds of residential or industrial mixed use that uh, kind of projected for the future. And then alongside that, on page 35 and 37, uh, that's, that's going to have your development criteria. criteria. Uh, so, so these development, development criteria were from the previous plan, plan and, and these, these are just, just kind of like, like a broad guide for any development that might come into the city. I mean, I mean it's kind, kind of things for all the development, like, like you know, making, making sure that the new development is tackled, what's the next one, you know, I don't want to put a set of building next to one of the other or something like that. Well, then it gets into more specific things, like under commercial development. Uh, uh, just, just making sure, sure you know, minimize, minimize different curb cuts, cuts long, 
Uh, uh, busy roads, roads, you don't have, you know, six, six entry ways, ways or, you know, one side, side or something, something like that, that kind of sharing when possible, or, you know, you know encouraging the reuse of existing industrial, industrial sites over brand, brand new things. things. So, so this is, is kind, kind of used by, by like commissions and councils, kind of, a, I'll, I'll say a checklist. checklist. So, so they're going, going down, down seeing like, okay, you know, this new development, development or new rezoning, new rezoning kind, kind of comply with what we're seeing here. These are some, some best practices, practices that, that, you know, it's easy to use when looking at all things like this. Now, now, I know, I know that since you've all kind of read through things, things and, and if you have any questions and anyone from, from the public with it, how to read through the plan or support the process that anyone might have a question on, I'm kind of open to answer anything you might have. Okay. Does anybody in the public have any questions? <laughs> Seeing none, I guess we can. I, does anybody on the board have any questions right now? We'll get off, the board gets an opportunity to question whenever we get ready to vote on it. So. I have, I have some questions. questions. Oh, yeah, you can do it anytime. Yeah. Anytime. anytime. No, you can do it now or wait. You know, go ahead and do it now. Since he's already up here. Okay. Um, thank you for your presentation. I just take the time to really Yeah, uh, said it did experience a Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, thank you, I appreciate it. That was a really, I think that I've read through this comprehensive plan and I think it's a real, real good plan. I think a lot of, in, you know, a lot of work, a lot of input went into this. I noticed that you had a fairly large committee to work with. When you get that committee, that larger committee, it gets sometimes tease to get everybody to agree on something to work with. So. They, were they were a pretty agreeable group, group I, will I will say. We, uh, you know, we, we got off on some tangents sometime, but you know, I think we all kind of came together and figured out what's best for us. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, I guess it's up to the committee now. Do we want to go ahead and vote on a comprehensive plan now, or do we want to go ahead and hear the other, have the other public hearing? I think we can dispose of the comprehensive plan now if that's okay. Let's get it off the agenda. Okay, 
you're, you're back, back up again. again. Chris, you're, you're back, back up again. Back. Okay, now does anybody have, or Mayor, does anybody have any other questions for the Mayor or their committee? Or I guess since Mark's on their committee, that uh, he, he could, you know, you could answer the questions too, I guess. Uh, does anybody on this board, this is just, just the board now, does anybody on this board here have any questions for them? If not, I like it. Okay. Does, does critical of 